What's going on YouTube? So when the Genesis GV70 hit the market, it certainly made waves in the compact luxury SUV segment. And now it's looking to make waves again with this GV70 fully electric model. We spent the last week with this GV70 electrified to see is this the best version within the GV70 lineup? Well, let's go ahead and find out. So like always, let's go ahead and start things off under the hood. Now this obviously is a full electric product, so you're not gonna find an engine under the hood. You will find a very tiny frunk. I'm not sure exactly how much space this has, but it's got Half enough to feet, fit maybe. the tire mobility kit and I don't know, maybe a, a thick novel would fit right there. <laughs> Regardless though, uh, as far as what the, makes up this electric system, it's gonna be a dual motor all wheel drive system making 429 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. All wheel drive is standard equipment and as far as your range figure, it comes in at an EPA estimated range of 236 miles. Now we'll be talking about what we've experienced over the past seven days of testing this out when it comes to range as well as getting stuff like our signature sound level reading so we can see how quiet this luxury EV is out on the road at carconfections.com. But let's go ahead and close up both of the hoods here so that we can take a look at what's different about the exterior design. So when it comes to the electric version of the GV70, you will find a few differences in terms of the exterior design, and most of those differences are gonna be up here in the front. So first of all, at first glance, it might look like a normal grill, but this entire upper part is completely sealed off. So no airflow is gonna come through here. All your airflow is gonna be down here on the lower fascia. The second thing that I think is um, Something to consider if you're choosing the electric version, particularly over the Sport Prestige with the 3.5 twin turbo, that's the fact that this will always have kind of the luxury theme. You cannot get the Sport Prestige on this, so you won't get those aggressive blacked out elements like you do on the gas model. Now in terms of the grill, one of the interesting things about this is that the uh, charge port is actually built into the grill itself. That's pretty interesting. Definitely blends in nicely overall. And let's talk about the lighting. Signature GV70 lighting. So we have the quad beam, full LED lights, top and bottom there. Then you also have the duplicated turn signal indicator and daytime running light. Now moving around to the rear design. Thankfully, Genesis did not really change much when it comes to this electrified model. Now there are a few things that'll clue you in and we'll talk about those in just a second. But for now, Drew's gonna go ahead and hop inside and we're gonna check out these tail lights because Obviously, this is a beautiful design element with all GV70s. And of course, they are gonna be full LED. So we have an LED brake light, LED turn signal. I also love how the brake light goes all the way across the top. And we also have LED reverse lights integrated down here in the bumper. So all of your lighting elements are LED. Genesis is built out across the back and we also have an exposed rear wiper. Now, this area down here is different for the GV70 electrified. This is all gonna be sealed off. You're not gonna have any exposed exhaust outlets as you would expect, this is an electric vehicle. However, I will say uh, I do kind of miss having the big exposed exhaust over here on the left and right side. As far as the tow rating is concerned, it's rated at 3,500 pounds. Next up, moving on to our wheels, we have 20 inch five spoke alloys. These are actually the only option with the electrified GV70. They have a nice gray finish to them. One of the interesting elements that we noticed is that you have white brake calipers, so that Definitely stands out versus some of the other models in the lineup, and they do get dirty quite quickly as you might expect from a white. Speaking of colors, we have five new colors for 2024. This is one of them. This is known as Cardiff Green, which is really a very nice looking color in the direct sunlight, but a little hard to keep clean. Coming over here to our mirrors, we do have auto dimming, power folding, blind spot monitoring, and heating as you'd expect. Now here at the side of the electrified GV70, I do want to point out this actually rides on the exact same platform as the gasoline version of this uh, product. So overall vehicle length is going to remain the same 185.6 inches long. Now, as far as your safety systems are concerned for this model, you are going to have all four active safety features as standard equipment for every electrified GV70. And that also includes stuff like highway drive assist 2.0. 
But guys, there is an incredibly luxurious interior that we've been enjoying for the past week on the inside. So let's dive into that, but first. If you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. All right, let's go ahead and get inside the vehicle. First, let's take a quick look at the key fob. It's your typical Genesis key fob, same as all the other models. You remain, or you still have a remote start function for preconditioning the cabin. You also have the smart park system for pulling into and out of parking spots. Furthermore, you can get in using your phone as a key. And when you approach the model, the mirror will go ahead and fold out and the um, accent lighting will turn on at night. But let's go ahead and take a look inside this really lovely cabin. So in terms of the overall look, it is going to be the same as the gas model. That's definitely a good thing. And let's talk a little bit about the seats first of all. So when you choose to have the prestige model, which we do, that's going to upgrade you from the standard leather on the advanced to the Napa leather. This is a very premium type of leather, super soft and supple. We have a nice quilting, quilted detail up here at the top. You also have copper accent piping running throughout the seat. And overall, it's just super, super comfortable. You have 14 ways of power adjustment, including four-way lumbar support. We have things like power thigh extension, and you even have ergo motion massage, which is a quite good massage. Memory seats will be located over there on the door trim, and let's go ahead and climb inside. Now, as soon as you get inside and shut the really solid sounding door, um, you can really go around and start to take in just how nice the cabin materials are. So let's start out over here on our door trim. First of all, I do want to point out you have soft touch materials even all the way down here. Almost no one does that. We have a giant piece of real brushed aluminum through there. You're gonna have leather through there and leather all across the upper part of the door trim and dashboard when you choose the prestige model. As we come down to the center section, more of that leather material and all the center part here is also gonna be finished in that leather with a big piece of the aluminum trim running through here. Overall, like I said, just a really well executed cabin that feels like one of the most luxurious in the class. And we, had, of course, have standard push button start here with the little EV badging on it. Now let's go ahead and dig into the individual details. We'll start off with our gauge cluster. So you might have seen this in some other Genesis products, but when you choose the top end prestige model, you're going to get the 12.3 inch uh, 3D gauges. So this little thing up here at the top monitors your eyes and gives you this cool 3D perspective. One of the things that kind of pops out at you is your blind spot camera system when you utilize that. That's certainly a cool touch. And we also have a head up display as well, which includes blind spot information. That's something that I quite like. As we pull back to the steering wheel, a really nice looking steering wheel on board. We even have things like the leather covered airbag cover. Your paddle shifters are going to control brake regen, of course, since you don't have a traditional transmission. And we do have power tilt and telescoping as well as, well as steering wheel heating. Also, we have the boost button, which we'll demonstrate that a little later in the test drive. Now, let's turn over here and take a look at storage. We'll open that console up there and you'll see some donuts in there. That's because this is car confections and we like to do the donut test because that is our emblem. And this is gonna fit 11 donuts. That's a pretty good performance for this segment, just a little behind that dozen that we're shooting for. In terms of other storage areas, you have two cup holders in front. Um, you have a pretty deep cubby here, and this is actually gonna be your wireless phone charging pad. So you kinda of throw your phone down in there. It can't slide around or anything. Now you have a floating column here, which is gonna contain uh, several more of your functions, including the uh, beautiful knurled metal shifter with kind of the, the glass controls. One of the things I do wanna highlight, if you can kinda of see it right now in the daylight, is the fact that it's blue. When you go into drive, it turns red. When you go into reverse, it's very obvious at nighttime. And I actually just wanna take a second before I talk any further about it, just the overall ambient lighting in this cabin is stunning at night. Uh, you have a lot of options, a lot of color choices, and it just lights up everything really, really well. Certainly something that's gonna get a lot of attention from your family and friends. Now in terms of um, our backup camera, as you can see, we've got the 360 camera, good resolution on board with this. 
Uh, we can also do the cool 3D spin, as you can see, graphics, pretty top-notch stuff. Right in front of the shifter, you have a similar shaped controller, which is for our uh, infotainment system. You can also use it as a touch screen. And then we also have kind of a roller, which will activate our audio system. This is 15 speaker Lexicon audio, and we'll go ahead and sample it now. Guys, the overall sound quality of this system is excellent. Really great sounding sound system overall. All right, so let's take a look at the climate controls real fast. As you can see, um, we have a dual zone climate setup, or actually it's three zone climate, but you have two zones up here in the front, of course. You do have physical controls for the, the temperature adjustment itself. The rest of everything else is gonna be primarily inside of this touch screen but it does have haptic feedback, so it makes it a lot easier to touch the things that you need, like your heated steering wheel, and also your three-stage heated seats, which are standard, and your standard three-stage ventilated seats. And one of the things that you pick up on when you live in a place like Kentucky that has bipolar weather, we have both used the heated seats and the ventilated seats within the same week, and both of them work excellent. Now, let's take a look at our uh, main screen up here. This is a 14 and a half inch display. Like I said, it is both a touch screen and you can also use that control knob down there at the bottom. Pretty much the same as the uh, regular version, or the gas version, excuse me. It does have some specific electric things like uh, helping you find a charger right there. As far as other things you probably wanna know, you do have a built-in navigation system on board, but Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are gonna continue to be wired connection for 2024. They haven't quite updated it to the latest and greatest that gives you wireless. Up top, auto dimming mirror, three Homelink Universal remotes. Prestige is also going to get us this really nice suede headliner, which goes all across the top here. And then when we slide back that sunshade, this will reveal a nice sized panoramic sunroof with a good tent on it. But let's go ahead and check out the rear seat area for this electrified GV70. Now, just like any GV70 in the past, we do have a very luxurious and nice rear seat. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the space. We're sitting in about 37 inches of leg room, about 39 inches of headroom, according to uh, Genesis. And as far as, you know, our knee figure, that's something we measure in all of our car confections reviews, is we like to see how much room there is with someone who's five foot eight and I'm five foot nine for reference. So relatively average size adults here. And we're looking at about six and a half inches of additional knee space, which is a pretty good amount. Also, my feet can slide up underneath the seat and I can also recline these seats a pretty good distance. And I will just say that this headrest really hits me in just the right spot. It's quite comfortable back here. I think I could take quite a good nap. Now, as far as features are concerned, this is a luxury vehicle. After all, we do have standard vents here in the center. We also have our third zone of climate control so we can adjust the temperature uh, back here independent. Additionally, for the prestige level, you're gonna get three stage heated rear seats. No ventilated rear seats is available though. And then we do also have two charging USB ports down there. If we fold down the center armrest, we do have a nice one. Two cup holders inside, these will fit a Stanley uh, bottle. So for those of you that love Stanleys, it will fit in the center console. And then over here on the door trim, very nicely done. We have a rear window sunshade up top. That's also on prestige levels. And then if we drop down below that, I mean, it's just leather from top to bottom. They just absolutely overdo how much leather they use on this door trim, it's awesome. And then we have some more uh, aluminum. And then down in the very bottom, we have a little bit more bottle storage. Do be aware though, uh, it's gonna have to pretty much be a water bottle. No like cup or anything like a Stanley will fit in the door trim. But I'm sure you're probably curious as to how much space the rear is gonna have. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Now, if you wanna open the trunk manually, there is a button actually integrated on the wiper itself, which is pretty cool. It also does have the hands-free function that you can turn on if you just walk up to the vehicle, it will sense your presence and go ahead and open up the uh, cargo area. Now, as far as this area is concerned, 29 cubic feet behind the uh, second row of seats. If you fold that down, we're gonna be looking at a maximum of around 56 
cubic feet of cargo capacity. Now, as far as how that compares to the gasoline model, uh, that is going to be, um, it's not identical, but it's about a half cubic foot is less is all. So really Genesis has done a great job with the packaging to make sure that you're not losing out a ton of space for this electrified model. Now, as far as the seats themselves, they do fold a 60-40 you know, split and you have handles to fold it here in the cargo area. I guess you have to give it a little bit of a, a nudge to get it to go forward. And as you can see, that does give you a good amount of space. Now, you know, here at Car Confections, we like to measure things. And of course, we're gonna measure from the back of the driver's seat to the rear of the cargo area to see how long of items that you could fit in this GV70. Um, we're sitting at 73 inches of overall cargo length behind the second row of seats, 37 inches of length. And let's see how wide the opening is. The opening is going to be about, if I can get my ruler straightened out here, about 38 inches wide. I will say it probably is a little bit of a, you know, a narrow, more narrow opening than a lot of the competition. And this area is also going to be a little bit more sloped off because this is a little bit more of a stylish product. Now, underneath of the cargo floor, we do have a little bit of room. This is enough to fit your charging cable in this model. And then down below that, you're not going to find uh, anything else, n nothing like a spare tire on this model. Well, guys, here we are in the electrified GV70. And in this test drive, we're going to be talking about quite a few different things, as you can see on the screen right now, including getting our sound level reading. I am expecting that this is going to be a very quiet vehicle, so I'm excited to see that tangibly uh, with the sound level reading. But first, we're going to go ahead and start with a hard acceleration. Whew. <laughs> All right. And that's about 65 miles per hour. Quick acceleration and the fastest GV70 you can buy. So if you're keeping a tally on, you know, points in favor of the electrified version, that's going to be one of them. This is the fastest model. Um, about four and a half seconds, zero to 60. It is. And you have that, you know, smooth electric torque that yeah. will propel you up to very fast speeds. Yeah, I mean, this thing is very, very quick. And it's worth noting, he didn't even use the boost function. We'll do that here in just yeah. a little bit. But that was just the traditional, uh, just full throttle acceleration without the boost function. It does change quite a bit with the boost function. So I'm excited to show you that. But as far as just a quick recap on what this is, um, it's a dual motor all wheel drive setup. You have a 77.4 lithium ion, uh, or 77.4, excuse me, kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. Um, all that together makes 429 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque. So this thing, is seriously quick and you know like drew said it's pretty impressive that it's quicker than the 3.5 twin turbo model because that is a very quick option as well um and this is even faster all right now let's let's try out this boost button it's like hitting the nitro button at need for speed here we go boost <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really fast. Uh, it's fun to do that. Once you like like uh, take off, like get going just a little bit and then hit the boost, then <laughs> it really feels like you've uh, hit the nitro button, like I said. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's enough that it squeals the tires. Yeah. And this is all-wheel drive exclusively, which by the way, it is standard all-wheel drive, but... Yes, dual motor, all-wheel drive system. And that honestly is one of the more peculiar quirks about this car is even though it's dual motor all-wheel drive um, when you hit the boost button it actually rears back so hard that the front tires kind of lose traction and you have this sensation of you're almost floating a little bit yeah i wouldn't recommend using the boost but <laughs> button on like a really twisty back road where it's like pretty narrow because yeah. you're gonna shimmy around a you little gotta bit counter steer yeah it. um yeah it is an interesting thing but this, while fast, I think it's very important to just go ahead and note it is not a sporty SUV in any way. Um, this is certainly leaving the sporty territory to the 3.5 twin turbo model. And this one here is really, really luxury focused. 
See, we're going onto a yeah. back road, and it's just going to be very apparent as soon as you get behind the wheel. There's a lot of body roll. This is one of the softest sprung vehicles that we have driven in a long time. I yeah. mean, it is really, really soft. So when you accelerate, the nose lifts up. When you brake hard, it dives heavily. And when you turn, it is going to body roll a pretty substantial amount. And additionally, when you push it, the tires don't have a tremendous amount of grip. So they you know, lose traction relatively quickly. Like I said, it all just confirms. It's, it's not that any of that's bad, of course, if the target is, of course, luxury, you know, but go for the 3.5 twin turbo sport prestige if you want to have that sporty dynamic. That model is quite athletic for a vehicle in this segment, while this one here is certainly targeting just ultimate comfort. Yeah, they, ma they make a version that's sporty, that's right. so they're not concerned about it here with this electrified model. And honestly, I think that is a little bit of a good move. If they were only going to limit the amount of trim levels that they offered this in, which obviously is for cost reduction, um, I think the luxury way is the way to go because having all that silent power, I think is very luxurious in nature by itself. And by the way, there is a sport mode and that does, you know, kind of change the throttle dynamics as well as make the steering a little bit tighter. But you know, we've been talking a lot about how this is a luxury oriented product. So let's go ahead and dive into the ride quality because that's something that we've certainly enjoyed over the past week of having this vehicle. We've driven it quite a bit and it just, oh, it just has a phenomenal ride quality. You hit a bump and it soaks it up great. I mean, the wheels are pretty small. They're 20 inches for a vehicle like this. So obviously that helps your ride quality. I feel like the seats are very comfortable and just the suspension is sprung so softly that I think if you want a very luxurious ride quality, you are going to be incredibly satisfied with this electrified GV70. Now, I also want to take a second here to talk about the range because, um, of course, this is an EV after all. So let's talk about that because that's very important for a lot of you guys. 236 miles, according to the EPA, is your maximum range for this model. There's only one version of this, so that's going to be the only range figure for the GV70 Electrified. Um, that's not a fantastic range figure. I'm sure you probably already know that. You're gonna get more range out of something with a dedicated EV platform like a Hyundai Ioniq 5. Um, this really is an EV that's specifically targeting just the luxury buyer. If you want all the luxury goodies and kind of want a traditional looking SUV on the outside, um, this is gonna be your choice. And of course that does mean that you make some sacrifices when it comes to range because this is riding actually on just the traditional GV70 platform. So um, not the best range, but it is going to be better than something like a Lexus RZ. As far as what we've been experiencing on a full charge, it's sitting a little about 200 miles is what we're experiencing that it will display here on the gauge cluster. Yeah, right. It's just, uh, you know, something you definitely have to keep in mind. Um, like Mason was saying, even though this platform was designed with electrification in mind, it is still not the same as being on a dedicated electric yeah. architecture because it does need to be able to accommodate a, a 2.5 four cylinder and a 3.5 twin turbo six cylinder. And since we are talking about range, let's also talk about the charging situation. So on a level two charger, you can expect to charge in seven hours um, from 10 to 100% battery state. Um, you can also rapid charge at 50 kilowatts in 73 minutes from 10 to 80%. And then you can go up to 250 kilowatts, which will mean that you can charge from 10 to 80% as little as 18 minutes with this model. Now, it's worth noting, not quite as fast as something like an Ionic 5. Once again, um, we mentioned, you know, it, in comparison to the Ionic 5, that is going to be maybe a superior electric vehicle, but certainly a much inferior luxury experience. And now it's air ball and slam dunk time. So Drew, do you wanna just quickly tell us the slam dunk? The slam dunk is just the traditional GV70 luxury. I mean, this vehicle just nails the luxury experience. It's been great to live with the whole week. Yeah, and the air ball is going to be the range. We really wish it just had a little bit better range. That's going to, you know, probably be the <laughs> point that most people are upset with with this electrified GV70. But let's go ahead and uh, get our sound level reading going 55 miles per hour because I'm excited to see how quiet this electrified version of the GV70 is. I'm going to boost one more time here. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> 
phone flew out of my pocket. <laughs> All right, sound level reading. Ushimama just keeps uh, dropping on me 50.8 decibels. Wow. 50.8 decibels is the sound level reading that we're getting in this electrified GV70. We don't have to sit here and guess how that compares to other EVs, though, because we can go to carconfections.com slash sound level readings. Um, but spoiler alert, I think that's going to be one of the uh, quietest readings that we've ever gotten, ever. And boy, was I right when I was talking about how I expected it to be quiet. This is the quietest EV we have ever tested at Car Confections. We've driven a lot of EVs. And not only that, it is only one-tenth of a decibel louder than the quietest car we have ever tested on the channel, which is the Mercedes S-Class. Um, so to say it's an impressive sound level reading would be a very, uh, a very big understatement, that's for sure. And the last things that I do want to mention here would be your warranty. Uh, the Signature Genesis warranty will apply here. So it's five years, 60,000 miles for your basic, 10 year, 100,000 miles for your powertrain. Also, you do get three years and 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. And let's go ahead and talk about pricing for this GV70 Electrified. Now, do keep in mind the gasoline models will start uh, quite a bit less expensive than this Electrified version uh, because we do only have two trim levels for this. So we're starting at 66,450 for the advanced model. Prestige is going to be 73,250. You do have standard all-wheel drive with this. Um, as far as the tester today, um, we just have the optional Cardiff green paint, 1195 destination, and we're sitting at a touch over 75 grand as tested. It is also unclear whether or not you would qualify for the $7,500 tax credit for this model. It is made here in the United States, uh, but of course it does depend a lot on your tax situation as well as U.S. regulation, which of course changes all the time. So uh, do keep that in mind. You may be able to qualify, but you're definitely going to have to ask your local Genesis dealership. And if you're looking to buy a GV70 or any new vehicle, we would encourage you to go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now, why you do that is because we have a tool on our website that will connect you with local dealers in your area to get you the best price on your new vehicle. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealer negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description. And guys, that's going to be where we leave off on this in-depth seven-day review of the electrified GV70. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you help give us access to vehicles like this where Genesis will send down this car for us to test out for the full week. So by you subscribing, you help give us those opportunities. So please continue to subscribe. And if you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.